Uh, good afternoon, Pierre, and thanks for doing this. Just uh, two quick questions from me. I'm just wondering, did this trade deadline go sort of according to your plan uh, as it unfolded? Uh, without a doubt, Court. Uh, for us, this trade deadline was about um, moving some of the quality char character veterans that we'd acquired over the past two seasons uh, to let some of the younger players have a bigger role. And for us, we felt that uh, the, it went according to our plan. Um, I'm going to squeeze in another one here too. Did, uh, how tough was it to trade uh, Erica Branson? I know you said this morning you had uh, referenced uh, being a new father and everything like that. Um, in five years here, uh, one of the most difficult phone calls, because if anyone knows anything about Erica Branson, his character, from the first day he came here, he took a leadership part. He played hard. Uh, anytime anyone tried to take liberties with any of our good young superstars, he stepped in, uh, made sure that there were, they had to be accountable. Uh, he practiced hard every day. He did extra when he felt he needed to do extra. Uh, as a human being, you're not going to find a better person than Erica Branson. And at the same time, it was about also him getting a chance to have a playoff run. We'll go to uh, Bruce Garriock at Post Media. Hi, Pierre, got a couple for you. Just, uh, I want to start with the decision to pick up uh, Victor Mete. And the second part of that is, do you expect him to play tonight? Uh, I'll answer the second part. Yes, we checked with uh, the NHL. Uh, he's going from one bubble team to another. So he's allowed to play tonight. On the second part, uh, we just felt as a group here that you have a 22 year old that's played, I think 185 games. Uh, from everything that we're told, he's a good character person he wants to get better at his craft he skates well he moves the puck uh you know he he's the uh, new generation type of nhl defense he might not be the biggest but he's definitely not afraid and uh we look forward to having him in our in our lineup as of tonight and the other thing i wanted to ask you is when do you anticipate um uh jacob bernard docker and uh, shane pinto may play oh i'm gonna leave that up to dj i think okay. dj's on the ice with those guys they will play uh, we've told both players that they would play uh, when they signed with us. Um, I actually talked with Jake Sanderson today to ask him uh, when he thinks that the Bulls should come in the lineup. Um, and uh, But they will play. But we just got to put them in situations where, you know, they know the systems. Um, it's totally different game going from the college game to the NHL game and where they can have success. But right now, we've only got seven defensemen with our team and we've got 14 forwards. So, uh, in due time, they will play for sure. Sorry, I just want to squeeze one more in, and that's just, you, you got picks in 2022 and 23. Is that, like, you feel you have enough picks for this draft, and, and, and you feel like there's a pretty good crop in those years? And that's it for me. Uh, obviously, this year we haven't been able to scout as much as in previous years, just with the, the situation uh, with the, you know, with COVID-19. So we feel that our scouting, scouting staff is one of the best in the league. And when we get an opportunity to scout, uh, we feel that we make we can make very good selections, add very good assets to our organization. Right now, um, I always talk to Trent about the draft. He's got a great handle on what's going on this year, next year, and, and almost to a point in three years from now. And um, he feels that uh, the 2022 draft will be a very strong draft, top to bottom, lots of depth. So acquiring those picks. Also, we can use those picks next year if we feel that we're missing a piece uh, to be a better team and you know the 2023 draft it looks like it's going to be a good one too so just adding another pick in that situation. Albuquerque's at Sportsnet. Hey Pierre go back to what you said at the start of the year I mean it was clear you wanted to bring in a, a number of veteran players the mandate being the young players had to earn their jobs they weren't going to be handed to them and now today as you said the the plan was to to move some out to to create room for them down the, the stretch here does that suggest that um these young players maybe exceeded your expectations this year or, or how do you view their plate well, that's a good question Kyle. i think all our young players exceeded expectations i think all of them took a huge step uh in their development in their uh output as far as production in their play uh, they're not perfect young players still make mistakes uh, but they never quit. They play hard. They're learning what the NHL and the NHL grind is all about, especially in a 56 game schedule uh, where you're, you've packed in more games than um, in other years. Uh, so we're really happy with how our young players have performed. 
and now they'll be given even bigger roles. Some of them will be given even bigger roles, and we look to we look forward to see how they rise to those to those challenges. Ian Mendez of the Athletic. Hi, Pierre. Uh, two two questions for you. Um, the first would be: Was there did you feel less pressure on your shoulders at the trade deadline this year versus years past when you had to kind of move bigger assets? And this time around, it it, it didn't feel like there was that type of pressure on you, at least externally. <laughs> No, Ian. In this job, there's always pressure, and I love the pressure. There's uh, there's only two, 32 of us in this world that get to work in the best league. Uh, as I've said on many times, I'm from Ottawa. I'm proud I'm from Ottawa, and no one here wants to build more of a championship team. And we feel we're going about it the right way. And I'm ready for your question number two. Okay, question number two would just be about uh, how much of the uh, uh, expansion draft. Was that a factor at all? The Seattle expansion draft, I mean, how much of that went into decision making in and around the deadline, thinking about what your roster might look like come expansion draft day? Uh, I, I think everything that we've done over the last two, two plus years has always been thinking about expansion. Um, a lot of the things we did in the summer uh, were planning for expansion more than I would tell you at this point in time in our season. Because you can't go in thinking, well, I got to do this for expansion and maybe have uh, a gun to your head and overpaying for just to meet the ex expansion requirements. Uh, a lot of what we've done as far as expansion planning, we knew we wanted to get it done uh, before the season started to, to give us as many options as possible. But it is a very good question. We'll go to uh, Murray Pam at Full Press Hockey. Hi, Pierre. Uh, when Ryan Dezingle was acquired, he expressed a desire to remain an Ottawa Senator. Is that something you might pursue later on uh, this season? Don't negotiate through the media, but Ryan's been a great addition to our team. He's comfortable in Ottawa. He likes Ottawa. Uh, when I told them that he was not going to be traded today, uh, I, I think you saw a big sign of relief. Uh, I think there's something to be said uh, about players that want to be in Ottawa and have success in Ottawa. And uh, at, a, at a certain point in time, I'm sure we'll sit down with his representatives. Matt Tidcomb, senators.com. Hey, Pierre. Uh, I know it was a couple of weeks ago, but what did you like about uh, bringing in Mike Amadio from LA? Uh, it, to us, it was just a, a player that we'd seen in the past. Obviously, our scouting staff liked him. Our coaches had, had a bit of history with them. Um, we just felt that he's a very smart hockey player. He's got a good stick. Uh, he's got some skill. Uh, sometimes things don't work out in a certain organization. And sometimes players need a fresh start, as it, I think it will be with the same case with Victor Mete. Um, and we, we just felt that they, it would be, uh, you know, uh, someone to look at uh, from now till the end of the year. Wayne Scanlon, Sportsnet. Hi, Pierre. Yeah, you talked about kind of turning the page on some veterans and giving the young kids opportunities. Is there anybody in particular you're really excited to, to see get tested down the stretch here, whether it's Eric Brandstrom or, or somebody else of that nature? Uh, we're an exciting team to watch. Uh, I, think you, I think you'll agree with me, or maybe you'll disagree with me, Wayne, that uh, except for three or four games this year, we've competed hard in every game. I love the fact that how you know we came back, it was 5-3 down in the third period against Toronto and we found a way to come back. But when, when it comes to your question, uh, I, we're all looking forward for an expanded role for Eric Brandstrom. Um, we're, we're looking forward to see what Victor Medi will do. He's 22 years old. Uh, to me, a defenseman, they need a bit more time than, than forwards to develop. Uh, at the same time, um, let's see, because every game in the Canadian division, I still think there are six teams in the playoff race. So I think every team that we're going to play pretty much till the end of the year, it's going to be very meaningful games. Teams are slotting for playoffs. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a great chance to see how these players play or these young players play in the grind at the end of the year. And it'll prepare us for future years to come when we're in the grind of, the, of those playoffs, how those players will perform. We've got time for a couple more. For the first one, we'll return to Kyle Bukowskis at Sportsnet. Hi again, Pierre. Um, the hiring of Zach Burke, how long was that talked about amongst uh, your group and, and why do you believe he was the, the right fit to take on that role? Uh, before I answer that, I think we have to show a lot of respect and credit to Pierre Grew for what he did uh, for us over the past few years. Uh, you know, working with Anderson when we had our 
great playoff run in the conference uh, when we got the one game in the Stanley Cup. Uh, I think developing Anders Nielsen into a really good goalie um, and a lot of the other players that we've had here. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we just felt, uh, and it was a decision that DJ and I made, uh, that probably a change of direction was needed. And this is nothing on Pierre Gru. Uh, we just felt that probably uh, Matt and Marcus uh, needed a change of direction as far as uh, what, how they were performing. And um, we just felt it was the right thing to do. And uh, we just felt that there was, it was time to do it uh, when we did it. Ian Mendez, The Athletic. Just wanted to circle back. I just asked you about Mike Riley, who just had a terrific season for you, was a really stable top four guy. Can you walk our, us through the process of like how you, you balance? Do we keep him? Do we trade him? And, and how that ultimately played out from your perspective? Well, we know Mike Riley came in here last year and uh, we gave up a pick for him. He came in. Uh, he was solid you know, from last year. I think he started the year a bit slow. Uh, it happens with some players, but he, he molded himself into, I would say, we're a non-playoff team and a, a really reliable defenseman. Uh, all around, he was one of our better players through the year this year. And, you know, you look at the pros and cons and, uh, you know, for us, it, it was just a situation where we feel that Eric Branson is going to be a really good NHL defenseman. Uh, we know we have uh, a superstar in waiting in Jake Sanderson. And I say a superstar, not as far as someone who's going to produce points. I just look at the impact he's going to have on our team. And when we're a cup contending team, how many minutes he's going to log for us. Uh, so at that point in time, you put those factors together. Uh, we have, you know, a few other defensemen, you know, in Jacob Bernard Docker, Lassie Thompson, that are going to be real good NHL players. And we just felt that, uh, you know, for the return that we were going to get, uh, it, it was the right thing to do for organization. But Mike was great for us. Uh, let's not, uh, that pairing of Mike and Artem Zub was outstanding for us. And at the same time, uh, I'm not afraid to say it. I've been in the NHL for over 20 years. I have not met a better pro than Braden Colbert. I have not met anyone who has the, as good of a work ethic. I've never said a word when he was sent to the taxi squad. Just worked every day. The days that we were, I remember the day we were leaving Edmonton and we were traveling. He was in the gym at 7 a.m. This guy's played almost a thousand games. And just to make sure he worked out that day because we were traveling that day. What he, how he helped our young guys. I just, I'd, sometimes I'd, I was even flabbergasted of conversations he'd have. He'd sit down with three of our young guys for pregame meal or lunch. And the, the information that he gave those young players will be so valuable for us for years to come. And, you know, I, I can tell you that, you know, the return wasn't high, but I'm so happy he's going to get a, another chance to win another cup because of all the people I've met through uh, my NHL career, I don't think I've met a finer person and a finer pro. The final one today is going to be for Mark Broussard at Ledois. Yeah, Pierre, you talked a little bit about Mike Riley, justement. À quel point c'était une question d'argent ou de, ou de terme avec lui? Puis est-ce que vous espérez que Victor Mété pourrait un peu se développer un peu du même, dans le même style que lui en arrivant à Montréal? Si, je pense, Marc, chaque joueur est différent l'un de l'autre. Euh, Lorsqu'on a fait l'acquisition de Mike Riley, euh, on lui a donné la chance de pouvoir se faire valoir. Il nous a donné du bon hockey. Et puis, dans le cas de Victor Mété, pour nous, c'est quelqu'un qu'on voit qui a, qui a des bonnes habiletés, patine bien, peut, peut manier la rondelle, euh, la bouger aux avants. Donc, on espère euh, pouvoir avoir du bon hockey de lui. On ne va pas mettre trop de pression sur lui, mais on a le voir, hâte de le voir dans notre alignement.